Arbors, value bettors and professional gamblers will all encounter problems at some stage. In today's video we're going to discuss how important it is to have a network. I'm Tony from Better Analyst, a former bookmaker and full-time professional gambler. Let's crack on with this. The first thing to mention is in networking, you need to be realistic. It's the same in any type of business. You're not going to get you know, a place at the table with someone like Jeff Bezos if you're just a startup company. If you're a novice gambler or you're just starting towards a professional route, you know, you're not going to get in there with the big syndicates. You've got to build yourself into that position. Now, the thing is with networking, it's really worth its weight in gold. It'll probably take you, you know, a while to find the flow, to get into the game, uh, to build really good contacts, but it's well worth it. If you want to leverage opportunity, this is what you're going to have to do. So let's talk about your future success. So we've put this into a PowerPoint presentation for you. And we've called it advice for professional gamblers, build a stronger network. So the first thing we need to discuss is the reasons why you should network. One of them is the understanding and the educational side. You know, we, we all learn from different people. I mean, that's the way life evolves, isn't it? So just think about if you have similar people around you, you should be able to learn and uh, educate yourself as well as also paying it forward and teaching them what you know. Getting money down is going to be very important at one stage. Accounts start to dry up. It gets more difficult as you go along. So you need, you know, more leverage in that situation. And to do that, you'll need to seek more betting outlets. This could be on the streets, it could be in other countries, you know, it could be different bookmakers that you've never heard of or you've not got access to, but you will need to seek betting outlets that you've never even heard of. Then, of course, to legalise. Now, when I say legalise, in the UK, you know, everything is tax-free for uh, gamblers, professional gamblers. So you're not subject to, you know, any kind of income tax on it. But you might find the benefits of paying some kind of income tax for banking purposes, etc. as you get further down the line. And the other thing with networking is efficiency. If everybody's got different roles and all bringing something to the party, you're going to be a lot more efficient. You're going to be getting a lot more information. Everybody's going to be happier and you should all be able to succeed. And when it comes to, of course, cost sharing, you think about it. If you've got to import tools, you know, you want to uh, get some channels in to, to, for information purposes, data collection, uh, tips, technology, it's all going to cost money. If you're a group of people, it becomes easier because, you know, obviously the costs are divided as such. Yeah? How you work that out is something that you're going to have to talk between yourselves. But cost sharing is a big part of it. Information resources. Um, it's a totally new ball game when you start to bet uh, professionally on a bigger scale. You know, I mean, you might be an expert in uh, football betting, soccer betting and such, right? Somebody else might have NBA information. Uh, it's all about, uh, you know, everything that's gone before you, what we've just already mentioned. That's also information resources. But at the same time, you've just got to think you want to grow your knowledge base and, you know, benefit to the full. And on that basis, you need to go global, right? I mean... You might be stuck in the UK, but it doesn't stop you betting in Australia if you've got people there to do it for you. Uh, vice versa, if you're in a country that doesn't, uh, you know, has got uh, big problems with uh, betting, you might want uh, uh, somebody placing your bets from another country. So go global, give yourself an opportunity, and hopefully, you know, that will bring you further and give you even more success. So one of the important things is that you look what you're particularly good at you know so i've called it networking niche in this uh, uh, particular instance because everybody's good at different things you might be a betting expert you might have uh, you know you might be able to analyze form uh, you might be able to find the bet yourself um so 
you know, if you're passing them on to others to enjoy, then they're going to be need to provide you something or vice versa. Of course, they might be providing you this information and you might be benefiting and you're going to have to bring something to the party. Sports modeling. Now, this is obviously the analytics, the maths, the algorithms. This is something it's, it's not for everybody, but as you scale, as your business grows, it is important that you really understand the importance of sports modeling. All these bookmakers are sports modeling, right? That's how they all generate so many odds. So if your sports modeling can pick out problems within their system and find opportunities, then you're going to give yourself a much better chance. So whether you're the sports modeler or whether you've got sports modelers around you or you employ them, you know, that's a, 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 a subject that you've got to confront. And then, of course, you've got the banking and money issues. Now, this might sound weird to you, but uh, I mean, I've even had discussions with the owners of uh, Pinnacle Sports about this. One of their biggest problems was banking. They just couldn't, uh, they, they used to have to go through third party accounts and, you know, because of the legalities of it, right? But there's more to it than that. The actual banking within your own country, your banks might even close you down if you start taking money just purely from betting. It's not from a sort of work orientated uh, business. You will have problems with getting future mortgages, stuff like that, right? You need people who understand money issues and banking. And or you might even be the manager. You might be the person that's really sort of, you know, setting your stall out to the alpha type who's uh, looking for the betting experts, bringing the sports modelers together, uh, getting the banking person to bring you all the information, you know, and you're saying you do this, you do that, you do. And, you know, so everybody's benefiting. But that's uh, also part of the deal. If you're the manager type, then management is your niche. Then the technologist, of course. Now, if you think about technologists, they've got to help you identify the odds. You can get in tools, you can get in, uh, you can build in systems and uh, whatever. But having your own technologist on board that really understands what you are after and what you're doing is important. So this is not all about you. You know, you are giving. You might be the technologist that's bringing something to this network, but uh, again, it's something that needs building. And then you've got the bet placement. Now, don't underestimate this part. Uh, me personally, I haven't placed a bet for years, right? You know, I tell all the people to do it for me. And uh, so it's automated. It's like uh, within uh, the system. Now, you know, the bet placement, don't underestimate this. It might be running a, a load of guys going around betting shops, placing bets for you. But you've got to be collecting the money. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be getting the optimum odds. So somebody who's good at bet placement is worth their weight in gold. So also you're gonna to need to figure out what you offer and what you need. So these are just like ideas I'm giving you, you know, and I mean, you're not gonna find them all today or tomorrow, but you might want to sort of consider who's going to be your betting experts, you know, where you're going to get this information from, where's the sports modeling going to come from, etc., etc. right? You just need to figure out what you're bringing to the party and what you're expecting others to bring to the party. Lastly, I just want to mention info digging. This could be deeper than you think, you know, this could be like due diligence on other people, on uh, people that you're employing or, or um, uh, bookmakers, you know, legalities, uh, game information. It could be a lot of stuff, right? But there's some people who are particularly good at info digging and building a sort of a team around that. So just think about, you know, these certain things and you find out where you are on the this niche and what you need so i want to give you some important networking tips the first thing to say is always give back now people think networking obviously is is about them and it's wrong it's not just about you it's about everybody within that network. If you're not giving anything forward, you're always the taker. I'm afraid you're going to get nothing because people will soon get bored with that. This is one of, one of the things that I have a real problem with, right? Follow through. 
I cannot stand people who do not follow through, who do not answer emails, who do not do as they say, who do not, you know, if they say they're going to uh, bring you information that day at 10 o'clock, it should be there at 10 o'clock. It shouldn't be, you, you shouldn't be chasing it. So follow through is very important in networking. I will tell you, always do as you promise and you'll be a good networker. And also, obviously, you need to pick and choose. If people are not fitting into the network, you need to get rid of them. If people are not sort of fitting into your mentality, you know, don't get involved. You know, quality is better than quantity every time. So pick and choose carefully who you want to uh, be within your network. It's a different thing to employing people. This is somebody who you are, you know, like partners with almost, right? And to build trust, obviously, now, the thing is, uh, a lot of people, they go out there and they just want to take, 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 and that doesn't build any trust. So make sure that you build trust by delivering on promises, making sure that you do your part and uh, everything will go much better. And don't be scared to bring others together. If it's not for you, I do this quite often, right? I get people saying to me, uh, I can offer this, I can offer that. I say, well, it's not for me because we don't need it. You know, we're at a little bit of an higher position, but it might work well with this guy. There you go, is a connection. I'll, I'll ask the other person. So don't be scared ever to sort of introduce two people that you might think. Just make it very clear you're not responsible for whatever happens because, uh, you know, uh, some people do think uh, when you've uh, recommended a person, then you're responsible for it. So also, I want to tell you how to grow your network or at least give you a few ideas on how to grow your network. And you'll know better than I will. The first thing is look around you. You have people within your proximity, you know, they might be friends, they might be colleagues, they might be people that you know from betting shops or from forums or whatever, right? But look around you at the people that you know and already trust. That's a good way to start building a network. You can use social media. We use Twitter. I mean, it's not really for building a network as such, right? But uh, I've got one on LinkedIn, for example. Reddit's uh, a possibility. Uh, Facebook, you know. So look through social media. You'll find interesting people. 99% of people, unfortunately, will be time wasters, you know, useless. Uh, but uh, you will find the right people if you keep putting it out. You know, when I say build a betting blog, we built a betting analyst and uh, the idea was basically to sort of uh, take the information that we was getting and already paying for and, uh, you know, all the tools, all our costs and sort of getting some kind of uh, uh, payments uh, back to sort of help us um, make even more in black and white but uh, you know you can do like just a, a small betting blog it could be uh, you could have your link out uh, from uh, social medias as uh, twitter uh, facebooks and so on right and you have a page there and on that page you'll have a contact you will have you but you know you always own that uh, twitter can't take it away from you reddit can't take it away from you you know it's like a, a domain you own it it's a website it's not necessarily a website but just something it's like a betting blog that's important and contacts will come from within you can also uh, post about pro betting professional betting in forums it will help you get an audience uh, a following and then people that are, uh, have something to offer might come to you you know and it just i mean basically what you're doing is when you're growing a network you just uh, throwing the uh, uh, hook into the pond and hoping to sort of catch a few fish, you know. Word of mouth, like I mentioned before, you don't just expect you to be the word of mouth for other people, you expect other people to be word of mouth for you. So always, never, never, never be scared to sort of say to somebody, do you know somebody for this? Do you know somebody for that position? You know, ask around, right? Because they might be sitting there and later thinking that day, oh, I do know someone, you know, so... Put it out, what you're doing. Don't be shy. And always, always pay it forwards. I mean, that's what we're doing with these uh, videos. We're paying it forwards. We're giving you some valuable information, hopefully. And uh, I think, um, you know, paying it forwards is part of being a decent human as well. So just think about that. Pay it forwards. Do little bits for people. You know, uh, obviously, uh, nothing that's going to put you out of pocket or something like this. But at the same time, don't be shy to do things for others. 
so there you go uh, again thanks for watching you know uh, like i just wanted to mention before we sort of check out now is you can pay for betting information resources tools employees etc but networking is the personal touch that's an equal thing of partners you know you are uh, you're bringing something to the table they are bringing something to the table it's different when you're paying for something so you know just think that's a, a service whereas uh, networking is more the personal one-to-one -one touch yeah um the last thing i really want to say was get in touch for one-to-one -one coaching you know if you think that you qualify for that type of level um visit us at uh, better analyst we have free tips up we have blogs up we have uh, tutorials to help you out uh, to help you understand more watch a few more things on this channel and don't forget to like and subscribe to uh, our youtube channel if you like what we're uh, doing then you know uh, give us a, a, a tick and uh, we'll do more and, and get you really into the game a lot of people saying we're already the most valuable um betting information on uh, youtube and the the basis of that is basically because we show you you know or i show you should i say how to succeed so take care for now you made it through another leg of boot camp we'll see you soon bye bye for now